Let me tell you about a gentleman I know. His name is Barry. Barry is a top banker in one of the biggest US banks. He's very well considered in finance circles. But his biggest achievement happened a very ordinary day at work. This was the day when he helped to dismantle an entire network of human traffickers. Barry was looking at his client's data, and he noticed something suspicious. Many cardholders would go to a chain of nail salon and pay between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning, and never less than $100. Very strange time and price for a manicure, no? So, Barry, and this was, and this was uh, even by New York standards, because this happened in New York, the city that never sleeps. But Barry did a lot more than discover a network of prostitution. He uncovered an organization where young women and girls were trafficked from outside the US. Now, human trafficking is a very soft name for something much darker, slavery. These young women, they were slaves. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident. Every year, hundreds of thousands of women and men are trafficked from one state to the other, from one country to the other, their passports are taken away, and they are enslaved. Modern day slaves walk among us. You could very well stand by one in the bus coming to work in the morning. You could also tip one in a posh hotel around the world. They look like regular commuters. They look like maids, but they are slaves. There are today in the world more slaves than ever in history. 22 million, according to the International Labour Organization. This is a big business. This is indeed an industry. An industry worth $32 billion. That is to say, the, the, the profit combined of Walmart and McDonald's together. The world is changing. Crimes against humanity are now very well financed. They happen and they take place in a digital world, a world without borders. The crime scene is the internet, vast and booming with data. Mobile phones are oozing with data, credit cards too, mobile payments, online visas, all these are the hallmarks of innovation. But they are also the tools of the bad guys. And us in the philanthropic world, we have to find new ways to give help. It is my conviction that we need to go on fighting back. But for that, we need a new set of heroes. Remember, it was a banker who freed hundreds of young women from a life of sexual slavery. It was a banker who discovered the digital footprint of criminals. So the new philanthropic heroes will come from very unlikely places, banks, law firms, media organizations. Now, before I go on speaking like an expert, I have something to tell you. I am not an expert at all. Indeed, I came, I came to ch charity totally by chance. I was a journalist for 20 years, then I was at the management of Agence France Presse, then I was managing Reuters news agency. When my life totally changed five years ago, because I was asked to run the Thomson Reuters Foundation, this was not my world. 
but I took the chance. And then I took the chance of changing the ways we were giving help. So instead of giving small grants to NGOs around the world, we decided to leverage the skills of the company and do what we do best. News, information, and connections. We were a bunch of very unlikely philanthropists, investigative reporters, uh, lawyers, professional of finance, all looking to change the world. So I think we got very, very lucky. Or maybe it was just a question of good timing. But as it turned out, the skills we could bring to battle were exactly the skills needed for the new digital battlefield. So let me tell you about a few of these new philanthropic heroes. Take Martina Vandenberg. She's a fantastic lawyer based in Washington, D.C. And she is breaking new legal grounds by using digital data as evidence. She can demonstrate that a modern-day slave works incredible hours without ever being paid. It's the data that incriminates. So she doesn't need to take the victim in court to testify. She spares them a lot of emotional shock, because, because what Martina is doing is very dangerous. She's suing the traffickers on behalf of the victims, and she wins. And every time she wins, she gets financial compensation for the victim. So in my view, Martina is a real philanthropic hero. And, and of course, she does all that for free. She works pro bono, so she's a real superhero, don't you think? So at the Foundation, we wonder if there were many lawyers like Martina around the world. And so we created a new program called Trust Law. And Trust Law is a marketplace where we spread the practice of pro bono in the world. It has been a huge success. It was created three years ago. So Martina is doing something really good for a woman. But of course, the challenge is much, much bigger. One of the biggest challenges is the lack of data to measure the real scale of crime against women. One of the biggest barriers is that most of the victims don't report crime. Take India. If you are raped, you are not going to run to the police. This is considered a dishonor for your family. And your family could even force you to marry your rapist. This has happened. But this is not a developing world issue. This is a worldwide issue. In the UK, only 15%, one five, of the women report rape to the police. These are official numbers. So we wonder if we could do something about this data issue. And at the Foundation, we are 26 journalists writing and filming for social change. And we got an idea. Why don't we ask gender specialists around the world what are the five most dangerous countries for women to live in? And we asked them to share their data with us, and we went ourselves after data, and we did a perception poll. It worked. For example, it showed that uh, India is the fourth worst uh, most dangerous country for women to live in. And then the year after, we did another poll. And it was the ranking of the G20 countries for women. And it showed that India was the last of the G20 countries after Saudi Arabia. Really shocking, especially for me, who loves India, its beauty, its spirituality, the people in India. How come? The biggest democracy in the world is such a bad place for women to live in. 
So of course it made big headlines in India and all over the world, by, by the way. But in India, the activists used the polls to ask for change. So by creating information, by gathering and crunching and analyzing data, we gave civil society and activists a tool to speak up and demand change. Human beings need stories to make sense of the world. And the more the stories are backed with data, the more powerful they are. So I think that we will need journalists for a long time ahead to speak and to shed light on the most odious crimes against humanity. So journalists, some of them, can also be philanthropic heroes. But let me come back to the story I was telling you at the beginning. Uh, the one about Barry, the guy who bust up a network of human traffickers. Last April, I was in New York, coasting with Cyrus Vance, the Manhattan district attorney, uh, a round table, and around the table, we had the biggest bank in the US and uh, age, um, uh, law enforcement agencies. Barry was there because he helped me put together this powerful gathering, and he was also there to share his experience and his knowledge with his peers. The discussion went a mile a minute, and after three hours, the banks decided to share some of their financial and technical data with law enforcement to fight human trafficking. And when I thanked them and asked them if we could mention their name, if they had no problem about that, they said, no, you can do. So here they are. Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, TD Bank of Canada, Barclays, plus American Express and Western Union. It's big. And we have our next uh, working group in two weeks' time. So these bankers in gray suits, you can also consider they are philanthropic heroes. Of course, I would never have thought that I would say of bankers who are more used to opacity than to transparency that they are heroes, but in that case, they are. The world is changing. New crimes new form of injustice, new ways to oppress. And us, in the philanthropic arena, we need new allies and new friends. We need bankers and credit cards company. We need lawyers. We need journalists who can tell a story that moves. We need uh, good guys to hack the hackers. We need uh, mobile technologists, we need data analysts. We need all the people who have understood that it's no longer follow the money, it is follow the data. So the philanthropic movement is moving 3.0. And you all here, the unlikely superheroes of this world, we need you. So come on. Suit up. Save the world from your desk. This is your chance. Thank you. Thank you.